Hello and welcome to Programming Like It's 1979. Today I want to show you some really great artifacts from the 1980s. It'll be fun, educational, and maybe we will learn something about how large software projects were possible even back when tools were much more primitive. The artifacts in question are related to the game Taipan, a game first written in 1979 for the TRS-80 Model 1 computer and then ported to the Apple II in 1982. At the time, Steve Wozniak described it as his favorite game, and he wasn't alone in that opinion. The reason we're talking about Taipan isn't just the game, though. In 1986, the author, Art Canfield, published an entire book walking through the entire program literally line by line, where he explained both the design choices he made and also the implementation details. I'm not going to do a complete let's play of Taipan here today, but if you'd like to try it for yourself, there are versions available for almost every computer and OS combination, for iPad and Android devices, and you can play it in your web browser online at www.taipangame.com. You've all certainly heard of BASIC, and some of you have probably even used it, but it's a very misunderstood language. In part because of the name, and in part because some implementations dropped advanced features, like matrix math, to fit into 8-bit computers, it became ubiquitous on home computers in the late 1970s. It was a popular language, but it could actually be difficult to wrap your head around. The way I'd describe it is very easy to get started with, but challenging to become an expert in. Having a book like this that explains the implementation choices in detail would have been an amazingly useful thing for a student to have in the 1980s. The game Taipan was inspired by James Clavell's novel of the same name about the British occupation of Hong Kong in the 1800s. At its heart, the game is about building a trading empire. You start with one ship and some borrowed money, and you sail between ports throughout the world, trading goods, silk, weapons, and opium to make money, buy more ships and guns, fight off pirates, and become fabulously wealthy. If your ship sinks, you lose. If you reach a million in cash, you can retire and consider yourself to have won the game. Now, Taipan is such an influential game that you've surely played games that are just Taipan reskinned. The earliest, and probably weirdest reskin was Drug Wars, later known as Dope Wars, a DOS game from the mid-1980s. Instead of sailing around Asia, you took the subway between Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, and other New York locations. Instead of trading silk or weapons, you traded marijuana, cocaine, and other drugs. In the early 2000s, the Tradewind series of games put a level of graphical polish on top of the gameplay that was essentially identical, apart from the locations, to the 1979 Taipan game. Now, despite appearances, I'm not really here to talk about Taipan the game, or about Taipan the book. I'm here to talk about Taipan, the Book of the Game. Published in 1986, the full title is Taipan, a Historical Adventure for the Apple Computer. It's sort of a natural expansion of the idea of typing in game listings in magazines. In theory, you should be able to take the book, type in the AppleSoft Basic to your Apple II, and end up with a fully functional version of Taipan to play, complete with graphics. But the real treasure here isn't just getting to play the game, it's getting to understand it. To take just one example, recently a group of my friends discovered Taipan and became completely obsessed with it. If I'm honest, this was the exact inspiration for me to make this video. One thing that can happen in the game is your ship sinks in a storm and the game is over. One of my friends was wondering, did I do something wrong or was this just random? Well, you can turn to page 133 of the Taipan Book of the Game and learn the answer. The authors first explain their intent. Quote, 
Some words about how we handled storms. This is one kind of danger which we can never, as players, totally eliminate. There's always a small chance that in any given voyage, our ship will founder in high seas. The chance is exceedingly small, however, but the authors feel it would be unrealistic in the extreme to allow an unsinkable ship to sail the simulated seas of the 1860s. Even now, no ship, however huge and powerful, can be considered completely safe from the ravages of oceanic conditions. So, not only do they explain the design choice, they go on to explain the actual code. Another question came up about the protection racket run by Li Yuan in Hong Kong. My friend was called back to Hong Kong, but wasn't given a chance to donate to the protection racket. A look at the book confirms you need at least 100 in cash in order to be given a chance to make a donation. The book also pulls the curtain back around certain game strategies. Taipan encourages you to buy guns for your ships to try to fight the pirates, but looking at the code, it's clear that the pirate fleets will always grow faster than your ability to strengthen your ship. This suggests that optimal play strategy is in fact to avoid trying to become stronger at fighting and just focus on trading and run like a coward whenever you're forced into combat. Apart from the technical content, the Taipan book is full of interesting discussions of 19th century politics, geography, the opium wars, the etymology of various terms the British used in Hong Kong and elsewhere, the spice trade, the French domination of Vietnam, the Dutch abuse and colonization of Indonesia, and the role of capitalism as an instrument of state terror in East Asia during the time period the game covers. It's a great read, even if you have no intention of playing the game. Taipan's author, Art Canfield, passed away in 2017. He never became a household name, but his game was one of the most influential ones I can think of, and it's still fun to play, even today. This has been Programming Like It's 1979. Thanks for watching.